Hello everybody, I'm Hao. I'm going to present our paper entitled Batch and Seaside Group Actions Using AVEX 512. This is joint work with Georges, Rohan, Peter, and Peter. Commutative Supersingular Isogeny de Hellman, or Seaside for short, is a recently proposed post-quantum key establishment scheme that belongs to the family of isogeny-based crypto systems. It comes with highly attractive features like efficient validation of public keys, making it suitable for non-interactive key exchange protocols. In fact, Seaside has ability to serve as drop-in post-quantum replacement for the classical ECDH key exchange. The Seaside protocol is based on the action of an ideal class group on a set of super-singular elite curves. Unfortunately, the execution time of Seaside is prohibitively high for many real-world applications, mainly due to the enormous computational cost of the underlying group action. In this work, we explore how to use powerful vector instructions like Intel AVEX 512 to accelerate the computation of the Seaside group action. The Seaside group action works over a finite field FP, where P is a large prime of the special form of four times some small old primes and minus one. It uses super singular Euclid curves EA, which are defined over this prime field and represented in Montgomery form. In Seaside, we are interested in computing the action by an ideal where Li are prime ideals and Ei are small exponents chosen uniformly from some interval. The Seaside group action equals to the computation of the curve E prime as the image of the curve E under an isogeny of degree L1 to E1 times until uh, the Ln to En. The entire isogeny computation can break into many smaller isogeny computations, and each isogeny is computed by using value formula. As for the Seaside key exchange protocol, Alice and Bob first generate their private key, which are secret exponents, and then they generate their public key by the Seaside group action with their private key and the starting curve. Alice sends her public key and uh, the curve EA to, to Bob, and Bob will send back his public key EB. Alice and Bob will then check whether the public key that they received is valid or not. So if it is valid, then they will compute the shared secret KA and KB by using the Seaside group action as well. The so octant curves KA and KB are isomorphic. The original Seaside paper contracted Seaside 512 would achieve NIST PQ security level 1. However, the concrete security of Seaside is under debate. For example, Pickard estimates prime P should be significantly larger in order to meet NIST security level 1. In addition, for the real-world applications, the constant time implementations are needed. Many papers have researched the efficient constant time implementation of Seaside. Some important optimization techniques are about using the alligator for sampling the random points on the curve, the Simba technique, and the two-point approach. Among these works, there were three main variants of the Seaside group action evaluation, namely uh, MCR style, OAYT style, and uh, dummy free style. Notably, the dummy free style is even resistant against fault injection attacks. Most recently, a new algorithm of constant time Seaside a group action named CTIDH was proposed, and it uses a new key space. You could watch this talk, also at the CHESS 2021. In this work, we present the first vectorized implementations of constant time Seaside. Our software contains a high throughput and a low latency, two types of these implementations. The throughput optimized one is a batched implementation that performs eight group action instances in parallel, which is designed to speed up the server-side TOS processing. In order to correctly and efficiently batch Seaside group action, we present several different hybrid batching methods. Besides, these batching methods are also beneficial for minimizing the latency of Seaside-based signatures, such as Seafish and Seaside, in which multiple independent group actions are computed in the key generation, signing, and verification processes. The latency-optimized implementation is developed to accelerate Seaside on the TLS client side, and each of the high-throughput and the low-latency implementation includes AVEX 512F and AVEX 512IFMA, two different versions. The target x64 software that we are optimizing is a Lot Encrypt 19 implementation. In this presentation, we will focus on the OAYT style implementation. AVEX 512 is the latest incarnation of Intel Advanced Vector Extension, which augments the execution environment of x64 
by 512-bit registers and various new instructions. FX512 contains multiple extensions, but a specific processor may support some but not all of them. From another perspective, all processors equipped with AVX512 support the core extension named AVX512 Foundation, which has a 32-bit vector multiplier. In our software, we are working on a SIM departing where it splits a 512-bit vector into eight 64-bit elements. A simple example of a vector multiplication instruction of AVX512F is shown here. One instruction can perform 8 element wise 32 times 32 bit multiplication and finally get 8 64 bit products. Among the extensions of AVX512, IFMA is very attractive for its public key crypto systems whose underlying arithmetic is a large integer arithmetic. Intel described IFMA as to new instructions for big number multiplication for acceleration of RSA vectorized software and other crypto algorithms performance. Specifically, IFMA, integer fields multiply, uh, multiply add. Firstly, multi multiplies the packed 52-bit integers from two registers A and B to produce a 104-bit intermediate product T. It then adds either the lower or the higher 52-bit of the product T with another packed 64-bit integers from register C and store the final results in a destination register R. IFMA was first supported with Intel Canon Lake and continued to be equipped in its successors such as Ice Lake, Tiger Lake, and Rocket Lake processors. In this work, we target the Intel Ice Lake processor. Okay, so now I will introduce our batched high throughput implementation. So let's first see the original CSI group action. Here is a variant of the original CSI group action. From these two highlighted lines, we could find that the algorithm is not constant time. Because the number of the isogenies to be computed depends on the value of the ex uh, secret exponents, which makes the execution time of the group action depends on the secret information. Therefore, it is uh, vulnerable to the timing attacks. However, the OAYT style C-side group action that we considered uh, in this work computes BI isogenies instead of EI for each prime LI. It computes EI real isogenies and BI minus EI dummy isogenies. So the total number of isogeny computations is always the sum of BI, which is constant, that equals to 404 for, for C side 512. This is the OAYT style group action. The difference between the original C side is highlighted. Apart from the different way of isogeny computations, it also adds a constant time equality test to see if the corresponding EI is zero or not. The curve and exponent values will be updated according to the result of this equality test. So now we have obtained constant time C side. However, this is not enough for batching. To be specific, we consider our batched software where eight OAYT style group action instances are to be computed simultaneously by AVAX 512 instructions. Besides, each instance is computed in 64 bit line and instances are independent of each other. The problem is the SIMD requires parallel instances to possess the same operation sequence, which is a more strict requirement than the constant running time. The operation sequence in OAYT group action also relies on whether the kernel generator R is infinity or not, which only depends on the randomness. A simple example is shown here. So in the first instance, the generator R is not a point at infinity, while in the second instance, it is infinity. The instance 1 and 2 will later perform different operations. This will cause a mismatch between the instance 1 and 2, which is a problem for SIMD. In particular, the probability for a point of order Li to be infinity is 1 over Li, which is considerably high when Li is small, for example 3, 5, or 7 in C side. In order to obtain a batching friendly and of course constant time C side group action, we need to mitigate this mismatch, mismatch problem. In the following, we will present three different methods to solve this if conditional statement regarding the kernel generator R. Our first method aims at making group action independent of all in, uh, inputs as well as all randomness. In brief, we remove uh, the if class of checking R is infinity or not at a cost of extra dummy isolating computations. 
The idea was, uh, has been proposed and used in two uh, previous implementations. To apply this idea, we add a new constant time infinity test and update the curve and other variables according to the result of the infinity test as well. Meanwhile, we accordingly add a new constant ci for each bi. Then the number of total isogeny computation is increased to the sum of bi plus ci. However, this method has several problems. There always exists a probability of failure in computing the correct Kaldeman curve in this method. That is, when too many infinity cases happen, it can make us lost the computation of the real isogenies. Therefore, a large number of extra dummy isogeny computations are required to make this probability negligible. For example, it needs to compute around 900 isogenies to make this failure probability below 2 to minus 32, while before it was 404 isogeny computations. Hence, it greatly reduces efficiency of the algorithm, while the probability of failure still exists. Based on the above discussion, we are, we are looking for a way to significantly reduce the number of ex extra dummy isogenies and eliminate the probability of failure, and meanwhile, return this batching friendly fashion of group action. And we succeeded to find the solution, which is a hybrid mode. Hybrid mode means that the entire batched software is composed of two different types of group action implementations, namely the batched component and the unbatched component. The batch component is an incomplete implementation that performs eight instances simultaneously. The unbatched component is a latency optimized implementation accelerating a single class group action evaluation. The key idea is to first take advantage of the batch component to compute the main bulk of the CSI group action for all instances, and then use eight times in sequence the unbatched component to handle the remaining computations needed in each instance. To apply the hybrid mode to extra dummy method, we remove the CI and create a new bound list B hat. And B hat is used to record the infinity cases happened in the batch component. And it will be used as a bound list in the unbatch component. Our experiments indicate that for each instance, there are often around 10 isogenies remaining to be computed in the unbatched component. As a result, the total number of isogeny computation is just slightly larger than before. Moreover, since the unbatched component has no failure probability, we conclude that our extra dummy method has no failure probability either. Our second batching method is quite straightforward. We make all the instances always agree on the same branch, therefore executing the same operations. If the kernel generator R is infinity in at least one of parallel instances, then we force all instances to skip the if branch and execute an else branch. In this else branch, there is a new scalar multiplication for t0. This is not needed before because li torsion part of the point t0 has already vanished, but in our approach, we are forcing all instances to proceed as if all kernel generators were infinity. However, the li torsion parts of some point t0 have not vanished. In particular, we define a new variable working as follows. However, when this variable equals to one, the above idea imports some extra infinity related computations, which in principle are not needed by every instance. These infinity related computations are shown as listed. In this batching method, each instance still computes 404 isogenies, but more infinity related computations. For this reason, we refer to this method as the extra infinity method. Also, the probability of this variable equals to 1 is quite higher uh, when Li is small, for example, 3, 5, or 7. As a result, an increased number of infinity-related computations is expected, which affects the efficiency of the extra infinity method. We mitigate this problem by considering again the hybrid mode. More precisely, we divide the primes Li into two subsets, one for the batch component and the other for the unbatch component. L unbatch contains only the smaller primes, whereas L batch in, uh, includes the remaining primes. In the same way, the bound list B and the secret exponent list E of each instance are split into two subsets as well. In the extra infinity method, we first execute the batch component for eight parallel instances to compute isogenies for the larger primes, 
with corresponding subsets. And the batch component outputs the resulting curve b hat for uh, each instance, then execute on batch component sequentially in order to obtain the correct Kodman curve for each instance. In this way, the infinity related computation needs to be computed is much less than uh, not using the hybrid mode. Okay, now let's turn to the third approach. Before we introduce the third approach, we give a few more details on the extra dummy and extra infinity methods. So we consider an example where uh, in an iteration of the inner for loop, n of the eight kernel points r are infinity. The extra dummy method will complete the computations of this iteration, and later it will compute n a compensatory isogenies with a unbatched component. On the other hand, the extra infinity method will enter its else branch to compute the scale multiplication for all eight instances, and it may later perform the other infinity-related computations, uh, which are in theory needed by n instances. Uh, based on the operations that are carried out in each method, we observe that the extra dummy method handles infinity cases more efficiently when n is small. So on the other hand, when n is close to 8, the extra infinity method seems to be more efficient. So based on the above observation, our idea is to combine two approaches aiming at obtaining a more efficient method. In order to do this, we set the new variable as listed. We add an if else statement to check if this variable is within a predefined threshold or not. If it is not larger than this threshold, we will perform the extra dummy method. Otherwise, we will go to the extra infinity. From our experiments, the threshold value for our OAYT style implementation is 3. And this, and, and this third method, we call it the combined method. So in terms of our throughput of implement, uh, high throughput implementation, for the class group action layer, we will take advantage of three different batch methods. For the curve arithmetic, we simply develop uh, them according to the existing four software with uh, minor optimizations. And for the prime field operations, we developed eight times one way implementation according to the limb slicing technique. To be specific, for the field multiplication, we develop many different variants and finally select the fastest one among, among them. We also develop a dedicated squaring based on the classic optimization technique as it computes the repeated partial products only once. Since the vector multiplier of the ABEX 512F and the IFMA are different, the implementation of the field operations in these two, var uh, in these two versions are of course quite different. On the other hand, for the low latency implementation, it can also serve as an unbatched component in the hybrid mode for high throughput implementation. The class group action layer is just the same as the OUYT style group action. The curve arithmetic can be easily parallelized to two-way, and the number of needed two-way multiplication and squaring is just the half of the number of original one-way multiplication and the squaring. As for the prime field operations, we develop a two times four way implementation based on the implementation of Arisaka, uh, Arania, and Lopez, which is original, originally designed for the field multiplication of SIDH. Two times four way means it performs two field multiplications uh, operations in parallel, where each operation uses four elements of the vector. We slightly optimize the field multiplication by interleaving the integer multiplication with the Montgomery reduction. And based on the same classic optimization technique, we developed a dedicated 4 times 4 way squaring as well. So in order to figure out the real improvement of our work, we benchmarked our software and the CSI group action evaluation for all the OAYT and the dummy free implementations on the same ISOLEC CPU. The speed up ratio is defined by comparing uh, the CPU cycle divided by the number of instances between the baseline and the specific implementation. Uh, which can be understood as a normalized uh, throughput. We use our target x64 implementation as baseline, because in this way we know precisely how much our vector processing techniques improve the result. And this x64 implementation also served as baseline in other papers. As shown in the table, our two-way low-latency IFMA implementation has roughly the same latency as the original non-constant time implementation, and is about 1.5 times faster than the baseline. And our 8 times one way IFMA implementation, when applied with a combined batching method, takes a 3.64 times higher throughput compared to the baseline. 
An analysis of the execution times of our high-throughput software shows that all the IFMA implementations are nearly 1.9 times faster than the corresponding AVAX 512F implementations, which confirms that the IFMA extension indeed significantly accelerates a C side compared to the general AVAX 512F. The benchmarking results of dummy freestyle implementations are summarized uh, in this table. These results show that our proposed batch methods still work efficiently when applied uh, to the dummy freestyle C cycle production and can yield an up to 3.63 times higher throughput compared to the baseline. Though AVX512 can work on 8 64 bit elements simultaneously with a single instruction, the theoretical maximum speed up factor of an AVX512 implementation compared to x64 is actually far from 8. The main reason is a multiplier. Taking 8 512 bit integer modifications using the schoolbook method as an example, x64 implementation needs 64 modification instructions for one instance, while AVX 512F needs at least 256 vectorized modification uh, instructions for 8 instances, and the IFMA requires 200 instructions for 8 instances. Compared to an x64 implementation, the approximate speed up of AVX 512F is 2.0 and IFMA is 2.56. Taking this analysis into account, our throughput optimized AVX 512F implementations have the expected speed ups. As for the latency optimized implementation, a two way IFMA latency optimized implementation of Psyche is 1.72 times faster than the X64 assembly implementation. We can thus conclude our two-way IFMA low-latency implementations also correspond to the expected acceleration. And there are several reasons uh, that make the two-way latency optimized implementation less efficient than the throughput optimized implementation uh, because overheads caused by uh, aligning and blending AVX512 factors in two-way curve and isogeny operations. Some point operations cannot be parallelized in an ideal two-way fashion due to the dependencies of internal uh, field operations. And also some competitions in the field operations, for example, uh, the complete carry propagation, cannot be uh, parallelized in an ideal two times four-way due to the sequential dependencies of the instructions. And also the instruction level parallelism or two times four-way is lower than eight times one-way since four limbs are stored in one vector. As conclusions, in this work, we have showed that vector engines like AVX512 offer great potential to optimize Seaside. We presented the first vectorized implementation of Seaside and developing efficient batching methods for the cost group action and combining them with highly optimized field arithmetic, we were able to achieve a 3.6-fold gain in throughput compared to a state-of-the-art x64 implementation. The correct par uh, parameterization of Seaside to achieve NIST Security level 1 is currently still a topic of debate. While our proposed vectorizing methods can also be used for larger primes, and certain parts of our source code can be reused. That's it. Thank you for your attention.